there is a lot riding on Bioware's upcoming new game, Dragon Age Dreadwolf, after Bioware's past failures with Mass Effect Andromeda and the disastrous launch and death of Anthem. They just need a big win right now to prove that there is some hint of the Bioware of old who made just so many incredible classic RPGs. The community just needs some kind of goodwill to begin trusting them again after they disappointed time and again with their most recent releases. So the hope is that, you know, Dragon Age Dreadwolf will prove to be some kind of sign that the heart of Bioware is still beating, but uh, some rough tidings that have been reported and some rough developments that have recently occurred just doesn't paint a great picture. Now, Dragon Age 4, Dragon Age Dreadwolf, has been in development for a while now. In fact, it was announced and teased all the way back in December 6, 2018. This was during the 2018 Game Awards. This is the teaser trailer right here from four years ago. And then after that, we got another teaser trailer at the 2020 Game Awards. This was back in December 10th, 2020, which uh, showed us some character teases and gave us a glimpse of where the storyline might take us, but still no gameplay, nothing tangible, no release window, release date, or anything of the sort. And then we got this trailer right here last year on December 4th, 2022, as part of Dragon Age Day. This is Dreadwolf official in-game cinematic trailer that showed us uh, snippets of like animation stuff that, you know, gave us more narrative glimpses, but didn't really show us the game. And so it's just been a lot of teasing, but nothing substantial, no gameplay, nothing to give us a hint on whether this is a game worth being excited for. And then it doesn't help matters that throughout the years, there's been a lot of reports about the development surrounding Dragon Age 4, Dragon Age Dreadwolf being tumultuous with a lot of shifts and pivoting. So for example, once upon a time, Dragon Age 4 or Dragon Age Dreadwolf was known as codename Joplin before that was rebooted because EA wanted this game to be monetizable in the long term. So it was decided that the project will be rebooted to implement more live elements into the game. This right here was reported by Jason Schreier back in January 2018 when he was sharing details about what's been going on with Anthem's development. He would dive further into what's been going on with Dragon Age in particular a year later on April 9th, 2019 in an article titled The Past and Present of Dragon Age 4 where he delved into details about how the Dragon Age 4 overhaul was a sign of Bioware's troubles and how the company has struggled in recent years to work on multiple projects at the same time. It was indicative of the tension between EA's financial goals and what Bioware fans love about the studio's games. It led to the departure of several key staff. Joplin was rebooted into what became known as Codename Morrison that would be built on Anthem's tools and code base. It's the game being made now, or at least back in uh, 2019. Unlike Joplin, this new version of the fourth Dragon Age is planned with a live service component built for long-term gameplay and revenue. So that was just really disheartening news to hear that EA was just completely butchering yet another beloved IP. But things pivoted yet again when Jason Schreier reported on February 25th, 2021, that EA has decided to remove multiplayer mode from the new Dragon Age game and forego live service elements. So thankfully, EA made the smart decision to not mandate live service elements and keep this a purely single player experience, which is what Dragon Age should be. That's what made so many people fall in love with Dragon Age Origins, just how uncompromising it was and just presenting a high quality game that was rich in substance and felt feature complete and just had all the makings of what makes a Bioware game great. Things looked even more optimistic when it was reported on February 18th, 2022 that Dragon Age 4 is reportedly in very good shape ahead of a potential 2023 release. This was relayed by video games journalist Jeff Grubb. And then beyond that, more recently, earlier this year on March 27th, 2023, Video Games Chronicle reported that Bioware veteran Mark Dara and the Mass Effect team are helping to finish Dragon Age 4, which at the time people interpreted as Dragon Age 4's development really ramping up, which might have indicated that there is light at the end of the tunnel, and that light is not too far away. But all of that optimism would be deflated by what Jeff Grubb reported just a few days ago. This right here is a podcast from Giant Bomb 
published on August 24th, 2023, where Jeff Grubb talked about what he heard from sources he's spoken to about the current state of Dragon Age Dreadwolf, and well, as Video Games Chronicle transcribed here, Dragon Age Dreadwolf keeps getting delayed internally, report claims. Dragon Age Dreadwolf's release keeps getting pushed back internally at Bioware, according to Giant Bomb reporter Jeff Grubb. He discussed behind the scenes goings on at the EA studio with unnamed sources to get this information out there. Now, I'm very curious what happened between February 18th, 2022, and now, where back then it was reported that things were looking like they were shaping up really well, very good shape, said Jeff Grubb, and now all of a sudden things are not doing so hot. All of this might also reframe how Mark Dara, who left Bioware, was brought back in to help finish Dragon Age 4. Maybe it isn't a matter of just development ramping up, but also them needing like emergency help from a veteran who once helped push Anthem out to launch. Like the fact that Anthem had any kind of launch at all and was some kind of cohesive product, even if it was feature incomplete and technically not sound, was all due to Mark Dara stepping in to provide some kind of management and vision for a project that was completely directionless and uh, whose ambitions could not match leadership's ability to execute. The end result to all of this is that back in 2022, it was reported that the game was targeted for a 2023 release, but now the game's target release window was moved to March 2024, a while ago, but it's currently planned to come out next summer at the earliest it's claimed. And Jeff Grubb believes that that release window is optimistic, believing that it's very likely that the game's release will get pushed back even further, probably to late next year, but possibly to early 2025. And while developers from the Mass Effect team alongside Mark Darrow were drafted to assist with the development of Dragon Age Dreadwolf, there is still a small group of developers led by Mike Gamble, who are continuing pre-production work on the next entry in the sci-fi Mass Effect series. But because people have been pulled away from the Mass Effect team, and because everyone's sort of hands on deck for Dragon Age 4 and trying to get this out, that has essentially delayed the next Mass Effect as well internally. It'll result in a longer wait for that game alongside a longer wait for Dragon Age Dreadwolf. And then it doesn't help matters that on top of all of that, Bioware recently laid off a bunch of people. And this didn't come through an investigative report. Bioware itself put out a statement statement on August 23rd, 2023, confirming this. This right here is a blog post from the official Bioware website, which reads, we'd like to provide an update about the studio itself and outline our vision for Bioware's future. In order to meet the needs for our upcoming projects, we must shift towards a more agile and more focused studio. It'll allow our developers to iterate quickly, unlock more creativity, and form a clear vision. Now, this right here is just a vague nothing burger. It doesn't explain much of anything. And things especially don't make sense when you look at who was laid off, which I'll get to in a bit. But they insist right here that change is not only necessary, but unavoidable. It means reorganizing our team to match the studio's changing needs. Again, just extremely vague about all of this. But then they straight up say we're eliminating approximately 50 roles at Bioware. That is deeply painful and humbling to write but the process is being handled with empathy, respect, and clear communication. I get the sense that Bioware put this statement out there because they knew that an investigative reporter would get wind of this and would just ask Bioware employees about all of this, and Bioware wanted to get ahead of the story and kind of frame things their way instead of letting you know games journalists frame things the way they want to frame things or, or frame things based on how their sources have uh, decided to convey the picture of this situation. But yeah, they fully admit here that approximately 50 roles at Bioware have been eliminated. And the reasoning that's provided here is that we have built a long-term vision that will preserve the health of the studio. This vision balances the current needs of the studio, namely ensuring Dragon Age Dreadwolf is an outstanding game with its future, including the success of the next Mass Effect. Now, there will be some employees who were laid off from Bioware who will be reassigned to other EA studios. It reads right here that there's a significant number of roles that are currently open across EA's other studios. Impacted employees will be provided with professional resources and assistance as they apply for these positions. Though they fully admit that it is unlikely that everyone will find a new role within the company, there will be some casualties. Some folks will be laid off entirely from the EA umbrella altogether but they insist that they're committed to supporting their staff as they navigate this change. As for how all of this will impact the development of Dragon Age Dreadwolf, according to Bioware, they insist right here that their dedication to the game has never wavered. Their commitment remains steadfast. We 
all are working to make this game worthy of the Dragon Age name. We're confident that we'll have the time needed to ensure Dreadwolf reaches its full potential. And then they close things off with more assurances by saying that we're making changes now to build a brighter future. We're excited for all of you to see what we have been building with Dreadwolf. A core veteran team led by Mike Gamble continues their pre-production work on the next Mass Effect. Our commitment to quality continues to be our North Star. Well, anyone can say that, but you're going to have to prove it, especially after the less than ideal launch of Mass Effect Andromeda and the disastrous launch of Anthem. And this right here signed by Gary McKay, the current general manager at BioWare. Now, they try to paint this picture that this is all for a brighter future for BioWare, that it's all about making the studio more agile, more focused, more flexible, more quick to iterate, uh, just uh, better flexibility and creativity to form a clearer vision uh, they say that these changes are necessary and unavoidable and that it's all about just paving the road for a better, healthier, long-term future. But then you look at who got laid off and none of this makes any sense. It's impossible to trust that this was a matter of trying to restructure the studio for the betterment of its future. It feels more like EA just wanted to save some money and laid off. I mean, some of the best talent that Bioware currently has, and they need as much veteran talent as they can get right now. Among those who were laid off was Mary Kirby. Her tweet right here reads, so, hey, if anyone's looking for a writer slash narrative designer with kind of an absurd amount of experience, I'm available. She was a writer at Bioware Edmonton. She worked on all three existing Dragon Age games and worked on Dragon Age Dreadwolf. And as for why she's so significant, in Bioware and in her tenure as part of the Dragon Age team, well, as PC Gamer describes here, Mary Kirby was responsible for creating some of Dragon Age's best characters. She started at Bioware all the way back in 2006, writing for the beloved Dragon Age Origins. Uh, she stuck with the Dragon Age series throughout her time at the company. Among her contributions to Dragon Age was the creation of Varric, a beloved character who many consider to be almost like a mascot of Dragon Age. She created Varric Tethras, RPG's unreliable narrator returning in Dragon Age Inquisition, where he once again steals the show. Absolutely wild, says PC Gamer, that Bioware would get rid of the writer behind him. New Salad the Gamer also talked about Mary Kirby's layoff, stating here that she's been at Bioware since 2006. She, too, wrote for all three Dragon Age games, even creating the unofficial series mascot, Varric. The Dwarven Rogue even seems to be one of the central characters in Dragon Age Dreadwolf, as he was in Dragon Age 2 and Inquisition. So given how central she's been to many aspects of Dragon Age and some of the, some of the most fan favorite content within Dragon Age including some of its amazing characters her getting laid off amidst the development of Dragon Age Dreadwolf and amidst the time when Bioware could use as much talent as possible especially in the writing department I, I just can't comprehend this and I don't know how you can view this as a move to make things more agile and more focused for the studio I don't know how this paves a road to preserve the health of the studio. Another individual who's been laid off is John Rennish. He tweeted, so many memories going through my head. The support from everyone is just wonderful. He's the foundation or was the foundation technical director at Bioware working on Dragon Age. And he's been at the company for many years. He's very much a veteran. Obviously, being hit by a layoff is not what I wanted to happen to me or my staff, but I can't express how proud of what was accomplished in the over eight years at Bioware. He, too, was a part of the Dragon Age team. He's getting laid off. The timing of all of this couldn't be worse. And yeah, scrolling down, you can see that this is a whole thread. He has heartfelt words to say about his time at Bioware and how grateful he is. Uh, but it, it's still insane to see um, the kind of talent that's being laid off, who you'd expect would be untouchable when it comes to layoffs because of the value that they offer uh, to the creative process within Bioware. And then right here we have David Gator, a former Bioware writer who left in 2016, tweeting absolutely gutted at the news of even more layoffs from Bioware, not just headcount reduction, but laying off some of their most senior and likely most expensive staff, people who deserve more loyalty than this. My heart goes out to those affected. Note that David Gator went out of his way to put in parentheses and likely most expensive, likely trying to suggest that this was a cost-saving measure for electronic arts rather than them trying to shift towards a more agile and more focused studio and all these other excuses like allowing developers to iterate quickly, unlock more creativity, form a clear vision to preserve the health of the studio. All of that just sounds like PR bullshit 
when you see what kind of talent is getting laid off. Like, I don't know how laying off such valuable talent, especially people who have been with Dragon Age in particular for so long, serves to balance the current needs of the studio. I don't know how it serves to make changes now to build a brighter future. You want to know who else got laid off? Lucas Christensen, as David Gator reported here, stunned to learn Bioware also let go of Lucas Christensen. We used to call him Old Man Luke and Ryder Alpha. There, since Baldur's Gate 1, the writer behind Minsk and Joker and so many more, one of Bioware's longest-serving employees got laid off. And in the comments below, you'll find so many people just reminiscing about his work and how impactful they've been. Tweets like these right here. And then here's somebody speculating, did EA just look and say, let's let go of anyone who's been at Bioware long enough to make more than a mid-level salary? David Gator speculated, personally, I honestly cannot think of any other reason to let go of so much senior level talent, none of whom I can remotely imagine were underperforming. The way Bioware frames the situation is that it's about too many cooks in the kitchen. All the while, they're firing freaking the Gordon Ramseys of Bioware, the Marco Pierre Whites of Bioware within this kitchen that's losing so much incredible talent. It was bad enough seeing all of the layoffs leading up to the launch of Mass Effect Andromeda and then the launch of Anthem. And now seeing more of this happen during the lead up to Dragon Age Dreadwolf's release, which keeps getting internally delayed. This just feels like deja vu. This feels like history repeating itself. This just feels like yet another trouble development akin to what Andromeda went through, akin to what Anthem went through. When it's this level of senior talent that's getting laid off, it's impossible to feel optimistic about the future of Bioware. The level of talent that Bioware is losing right now cannot be understated. Somebody here tweeted, it's so insane to me how many incredible talent long-term employees are being let go. Like, combined that must be well over a century's worth of experience walking out the door. David Gator responded, if all 50 were senior level folks, we're talking about way more than just a century. Luke himself had been at Bioware for, what, 26 years? Now, there's no confirmation how many of these laid off employees were senior, but enough big names have been laid off where this is all just raising so many questions about the current state of Bioware and what EA is doing to the studio. And David Gator, by the way, had commented back in May 2nd, 2023 about how Bioware and EA just show no loyalty to their writers who are the foundation of what made Bioware games so great, those narrative RPG experiences that they're so well known for. He tweeted back then, even Bioware, which built its success on a reputation for good stories and characters, slowly turned from a company that vocally valued its writers to one where we were quietly resented with a reliance on expensive narrative seen as the albatross holding the company back. And it feels like that's exactly what's going on with this recent round of layoffs. We've already been seeing how the departure of so much senior talent, especially in the writing department, has negatively impacted recent bio releases like Mass Effect Andromeda and like Anthem. And so their decision to try to improve the studio and make it healthier for the long term is to let go of more senior veteran level talent who offered some of the best writing and some of the most beloved writing that people have experienced in Bioware games. What? Look, I hope when Dragon Age 4 or Dragon Age Dreadwolf launches, you know, it'll shine and uh, it'll, it'll give us some sense of optimism. But even then, you know, whatever projects are developed from then on won't have the backing of all of these amazing writers who are being let go left and right. And so even if there are some short term victories in the long term, I cannot imagine a uh, Bioware being able to sustain itself. I'll be very curious to see if there are any investigations in the works right now. This definitely feels like another Bioware situation that we'll get a big report out of. Maybe Jason Shry is already working on it because something's not right with this picture. At the end of the day, you know, it's hard for me to say exactly what's going on. I can just report what's out there. But I do hope that all those who have been laid off just uh, find greener pastures and find studios who will really appreciate their talent and allow that talent to shine. In the meantime, though, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on what's going on with Dragon Age Dreadwolf getting internally delayed and now with the 50 or so employees being laid off, among them being some really veteran, senior, talented folks who have been with Bioware for so long and are responsible for some of the best Bioware content. It's kind of crazy. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.